Hey guys, Abrasio here, and today I'm gonna show you how to make um, studio lighting and how to perfect it, how to add object objects into that scene, and how it works. So basically, I'm gonna cover studio lighting in <coughs> Cinema 4D. So let's first check our render settings so this might work. So the way studio lighting works is that it um, utilizes photons and their energy. Well, not their energy, but it basically utilizes photons and emits objects, uh, object lighting instead of light lighting. So object lighting is when uh, an object casts uh, light instead of uh, actual lights, you know? Because uh, photo photons, um, they cast photons and photons bounce um thus mimicking uh real life lighting so let's go to global illumination and in the irradiance cache cache choose the stochastic samples to low and the record record density to low and now if we render we have nothing but choose the output to full hd resolution or something so it fits <laughs> okay so now it fits but it's not the wow how did you call that um the field of view that we want so just I like to have a wider angle. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I always like to have a wider angle, so. Okay, let's do this. First, what you're gonna need. Okay, so I have a, an L Studio, which is basically a plane that um, just ramps up. It's basically this. You can model it, but you know, uh, if you want, I could put up a .c4d file, and um, you can actually go into your um, where it is content browser, and there we have a Studio L, and you can grab your Studio L. So let's see now. Mm. Make a plane. And basically just make it kind of big, but you want it to be wide. <laughs> um, and rotate it along the... I have no idea what axis this is. But who cares? Just make it like that. make it 90 degrees and um, place it on one side of the studio duplicate it and place the other on the other side of the studio so now what do we have guess what we have nothing <clears throat> so create a new material and uh, copy paste it rename the first one key light and the other one light just light because uh, one is gonna be the light and one one is gonna be the main light and one is gonna be the actual key light that gives the color okay so for this to work we need uh, luminance so go to the luminance tab and check it and set the color to an orange color and set the brightness to like 500 and drag the light the material to the light for the second key light you go to luminance and choose a blue color because of course it's gonna be a key light and you can not have the Michael Bay effect if you don't have a blue key light <sighs> damn you Michael Bay for being so predictable uh, so now we have Yay, we have fucking light coming from fucking objects. Yeah, be excited, you little fuckers. Um, 
So of course we need another light, which is gonna be a basic uh, overhead softbox and uh, create another plane. Make it bigger than all the others, so the others will feel inferior to the big plane up top. Make a new light. I mean a material and the luminance should be pure white drag it and set the brightness to like 300 and now we have this voila of course this needs um, this needs tweaking and uh, lots and lots of patience but you'll get there don't worry um, yeah, that's looking good. Of course, you need to lower the brightness of the big light because it's so big. And it's so big, it just won't fit. But, you know, yeah, that's probably the best. Like, 225% brightness on the big light. So the others won't feel as jealous. Let's add a sphere in here. And as you can see, um, this will actually cast shadows and will cast more natural shadows than anything you've ever seen before because uh, photons will not touch the, the place that shadows w will be cast and will remain dark and it's natural. It, it just feels good, you know? See? It just feels good. See that? And of course, what you can do is grab a new material, and in the color, you can set uh, the texture to a gradient, and um, set it to the vertical, and grab a sky, set the material to the sky, and um, this is how it behaves at the moment and let's mimic a sky here so set the top color to like a bluish the bottom color to like a brownish let's see what we have see it's looking pretty good As when there's actually no lights in the scene and all we need to do is add some ambient occlusion and let's add some texture so you know that this works call the sphere and set the color Le actually let's grab an image based texture let's see if I have some of these What's this? Oh, yeah, forgot about that. Um, cardboard, cardboard. Let's see. Okay, so this is a glass type of texture. Let's see if it. As you can see, it reacts to it pretty naturally. If you go over here, you can get the blue tint. As you can see, if you come over here, you can see that it has the uh, orange tint. It's pretty natural and, you know, has a nice vibe to it because, um, you know, it's just how it is. Let's see if uh, wood. Let's get some wood. That's what she said. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do it. Um, hmm. Edit image. Okay, basic wood. Let's add a filter and shoot and in the filter choose a shader. 
So let's see. Colorize. No, let's let's not colorize it. <laughs> let's lower the saturation. Play around with the hue. Nah, I'm just getting. And of course, we need to copy the channel and paste it in the bump channel. And let's render this. Guess what? It's looking pretty nice. That's more I can say for about yo mama. I'm sorry. And uh, let's use a nice tree. Let's make a nice reflection. Actually, let's make it 100% reflection y. So you can actually see what's going on. Booyah, baby. Booyah. See that? Now that looks pretty awesome. And that's how you achieve studio lighting. Oh, let's actually add some text in here. Of course, this font sucks, but what are you gonna do? Um. Actually, text reacts to this kind of lighting pretty nice, as you can see. Studio lighting is one of the best ways to uh, do your text, and if you want a clean and simple logo, um, let's see what you can do. You can actually lower the reflection so it's not as reflective. Set the colors to a bluish type of color kind of desaturated and um, this looks pretty nice because uh, gives it a little bit of contrast and what you can do is actually make it not pitch black but kind of black you know and um, this gives it a nice uh, reflection-y effect, which is pretty cool, and um, that's basically it. Let's see if how it will look if it's pitch black. You know how it looks? It looks nice, and if we just zoom in and just bring, bump up the scale of this it will look even nicer um so there we go of course we need another font this Arial font sucks. Helvetica like owns Arial any time of the day, you know. Let's see what's a nice font. One of the most fonts I use is uh, Century Gothic. I don't know. I love this font. Like I'm clearly in love with this font. And actually, let's choose a fillet cap on both sides. Because it will give the specular a bit more to, you know, react with the lights. So, see, see how it looks all natural and shit and cool. That's actually the reflection from the tech from the light above. 
this here is the reflection from that light and you see it's kind of choppy and shit but we can fix that by going to render render settings global illumination and in the irradiance catch choose medium okay so this is what I got I just basically moved the camera around and in the render settings since, th since this is gonna be a single image I just chose in the glow illumination I just picked high as the stochastic, stochastic samples and record density and the smoothing let's choose heavy and catch refinement choose high over sampling medium basically choose like the best settings because it's gonna be a um, a single image and let's see IR plus QMC as a still image and anti-aliasing you want the best anti-aliasing and filter still image of course yeah that's it I'm just gonna pause the video and let this render and and of course with all the settings on best I got this it looks real nice it's got a real nice feel to it it's got the professional feel to it and um, I'm pretty excited to say that uh, this tutorial has come to an end I have to go study now but that's not the point the point is that you learned how to make studio lighting you learned how to utilize ambient occlusion you learned how to utilize um, uh, lights uh, being cast from geometry instead of actual lights you, you learn how to light up your scene with geometry you learn how to use global, global illumination and if you didn't know all this stuff then why what are you doing here why did you search for this tutorial I have no idea honest to god that it will haunt you for the rest of your life <laughs> yeah um, of course if you like this like this tutorial oh god uh, like this tutorial favorite it uh, share it with your friends because uh, many people need, need to know this stuff this is basic fundamental stuff that all people must know about cinema 4d if they're just getting started <laughs> you know um, well actually most professionals don't know this they still use lights but geometry lights are the bomb you know so Live long and prosper, and may the force be with you.